I am at the Magic Kingdom of Walt Disney World, Florida. This is my late June 2021 visit, so I have made it for the 50th anniversary year. Preparations for the true 50th anniversary celebration beginning on October 1st are still being made. Clearly the iconic Main Street station is covered in scaffolding as it is being renovated. And the railroad is still closed after several years due to the construction of the Tron Coaster. Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, Donald, and Daisy are greeting visitors from the station. I'm also here less than a year after a historic months-long closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic and only recently have restrictions been rapidly lifted, masks are not currently required indoors or outdoors, and more and more features are reopening seemingly every day. The majestic 189 foot tall Cinderella Castle has received a major makeover in the past year. It is now a rose gold castle to celebrate both the 70th anniversary of the Cinderella movie and the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. Here in Liberty Square is one of my all time favorite attractions, the Hall of Presidents, an opening day feature from 1971. And sadly it is currently closed as they prepare a Joe Biden audio animatronic. My first ride today will be Splash Mountain, and this is going to be a bit somber as this may very well be my last ride on Splash Mountain. It was announced a while ago that Splash Mountain here at the Magic Kingdom as well as at Disneyland will be rethemed to Princess and the Frog. I understand why they have decided to do this and I'm interested in seeing how it turns out. I really hope it's good. Splash Mountain is based off the controversial and banned 1946 movie Song of the South, which was based off African American folk tales recorded by Joel Chandler Harris in the 1880s. The mixed animation and live action Disney film was definitely racist, even though it's banned you can still find it and watch it. In the film, the Reconstruction era plantation life is unrealistically idealized. There's black vernacular and other offensive stereotypes in the live action parts. But this ride does strictly stick to the folktale of Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear portrayed in the animated sequence of the film. Still many people view that as problematic. I'm also unsure how Princess and the Frog is going to naturally fit in thematically with Frontierland. They will probably have to retheme a lot of landscaping as well. So this is likely my last time riding Splash Mountain in its original form.
There's a flatboat going around the recently renovated Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island with that castle towering in the background. Now walking over into Fantasyland. On this visit, I'll be sticking to the old Fantasyland. Not gonna have time to brave the queue for Seven Dwarves Mine Train. First, I'm going to do a true classic. It's a Small World, which originally debuted for the 1963 to 64 New York World's Fair and was designed by Mary Blair.
Here is the Cinderella Fountain by the castle. That rose gold paint job and trim is really awesome. Looks like it's going to be raining and storming quite a bit for the rest of the day. Like I mentioned, I am very excited to be here in 2021 because this year is the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. The actual anniversary date is October 1st, and that is when the festivities formally begin. The new futuristic gateway to Tomorrowland is really cool. I do like this much better than the steampunk one they had before. Lots of retheming has been done here at Tomorrowland since my last visit. They're moving away from the steampunk and making everything more streamlined. Which as much as I like steampunk is a lot more fitting here. Yeah, it's raining pretty hard. The Astro Orbiter is down. I have mobile ordered here at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, perhaps the most entertaining restaurant here at the Magic Kingdom, as Sunny Eclipse is always playing some tunes. There is the Tron light cycle run structure. I'm looking forward to it. And now I'm going to go on Space Mountain, the classic roller coaster through space. I love the music and ambiance of the Star Tunnel. Space Mountain is difficult to film, and especially because I only have my phone, I'm not going to bother recording it this time, but I got the front seat and it was awesome. The exit corridor of Space Mountain has some interesting tableaus of futuristic planets. There's the partner statue. Depicting Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse, here where Walt's dream has been partially realized in his Florida property. Now heading into Adventureland, where I'm gonna do Pirates of the Caribbean. 
Here at the Magic Kingdom, it is themed after a Spanish Castillo.
And now it's time for the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, one of the greatest and wildest coasters ever conceived. The Yellowstone-esque geysers and hot springs built into the mountain are a nice touch. The hoodoos are based off Bryce Canyon and other features from Monument Valley. The queue goes through the abandoned mine office of Tumbleweed. Throughout the queue there are some remnants of an old mining office, even though according to the legend a flash flood made this Wild West mining operation go bankrupt. Nowadays the trains through the mountain are possessed. And we're going to take the wildest ride in the wilderness.
There's no way I could visit the Magic Kingdom without paying a visit to the historic Country Bear Jamboree. The only one left. I already walked through the gate to enter, but it looks like Cinderella is passing outside in a Main Street automobile. There's Tiana. And there's a bunch of Disney princesses in the double-decker bus. Enjoy some excerpts from the Country Bear Jamboree.
happy family. <laughs> it's time for one of the most innovative and impressive rides ever created. The Haunted Mansion. And this graveyard is the grave of Mr. Toad, whose fantastic ride was replaced here at the Magic Kingdom in 1998 by Winnie the Pooh. At least Mr. Toad is remembered here at the graveyard. The tombs outside the Haunted Mansion are very clever. Although due to COVID, the interactive graveyard queue is bypassed. They start doing the stretching room again just a few days prior. So this is gonna be awesome. If all these people could just shut up. Which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> Stopped with priceless first editions, only ghost stories, <laughs> and marble busts of the greatest ghost writers the literary world has ever known. They have all retired here to the London Mansion. Actually, we have 999 happy haunts here, but there's room for a thousand. Any volunteers? <laughs> if you should decide to join us, final arrangements may be made at the end of the cruise.
give us a hint by ringing a bell. Serpents and spiders, tail of a rat, call in the spirits wherever they're at. I am rapidly running out of time, so I've come over to Fantasyland for Peter Pan's flights. 
perhaps the most old school Disney attraction in Walt Disney World. I am going through the relatively new interactive queue line for the first time. Back when fast passes were a thing and available to everyone, I'd always get one for this ride, so let's see how this is. Not gonna lie, that queue is pretty well done and quite entertaining. Now let's hop on the galleon and enjoy the last ride for today. The tail end of a cavalcade is coming through on Main Street.
Well, I didn't get to do nearly everything I want today, nor get the footage I was planning on to make a whole new series of videos on the Magic Kingdom, but it was still a great time, and I will always be able to say that I went to the Magic Kingdom on the 50th anniversary year. There's Donald Duck by the fountain with the Crystal Palace in the background. And on this side of the fountain is a statuette of Br'er Rabbit. They will also probably remove this statue and stop using the Zippity Doodah song, though it was still being played at the entrance today. Casey's Corner unexpectedly opened today after a renovation, and I'm going to start heading down Main Street, USA. The architecture and stained glass inside this shop is really cool. That's also a very interesting mural. Happily Ever After, the fireworks show will relaunch tomorrow. Of course, I had to make my park reservation for today months in advance, and they only announced that recently, so I missed the fireworks by one day. Thankfully, I saw the show last time I was here, as they are going to retire it. There's the statue of Roy Disney, who was absolutely critical to the success of the Disney company, and after the death of his brother, sacrificed his retirement to spearhead the construction of Walt Disney World, 50 years ago now. And under the railroad station is a portrait of the train lover and imaginative mastermind of this wonderful place, Walt Disney. Now they are going to retire the colors for the day with the flag retreat ceremony starring the Dapper Dance.
to continue our tribute to America. And two, three, four. You're a grand old flag, you're a high-flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true, under red, white, and blue, where there's never a pause or rag. But should all acquaintance be forgot, Keep your eye on the grand old flag. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountain majesties above the today everyone please enjoy the rest of your day here in the magic kingdom have a great day guys please check out my other walt disney world videos and thanks for watching